What's up guys, Coding Jesus here, and in today's video we're going to be looking at a C Sharp 8 feature, which is switch expressions. So not a switch statement, a switch expression. So without further ado, let's jump into the code, starting off with the difference between a switch statement and a switch expression, and we're going to end off with a tuple pattern. So a, a certain pattern that you can use with a switch expression. Now I'm also going to have a video on the positional pattern, and another video on the property pattern. Okay, so let's first look at the tuple pattern with switch expressions. Okay, so what's a normal switch statement? So let's have something like result equals get result, and we're just going to have a function that's going to take in a value and return a value using a switch statement. So let's say we want to have something like, I don't know, an enumeration color, red, green, blue. And we want our get result function to take in a color dot red. Okay. Now let's actually go ahead and implement this get result using a classic switch statement. So let's actually return a string here. And let's just find the string representations of these colors. Of course, you can call to string on them and you can pass a, a format into that to string method, but we're going to use a function called get result. Let's actually call it get string to be more expressive here. So get string format. Okay. What we can do is we can switch on the color. Okay, so we can switch on red and we can say case color blue return blue right case color green or red turn red case color dot green return green. And of course, let's have a default so if we don't have any of these enumerations defined, let's just throw an exception. Invalid operation and exception, unknown enumeration. Okay, that's quite straightforward. We get the result and let's go ahead and write it to screen. So when we write this to screen, what we'll end up getting is red. Okay, it's quite simple. It's expressive, it's easy to understand. Now there's something introduced in C Sharp 8 called a switch expression. Now what's an expression? Well, a switch expression is kind of like a switch statement. In fact, it's very similar to one, only that it enables you to use three new patterns, the tuple pattern, property pattern, and positional pattern. Let's take a look at the tuple pattern first, but before even that, we need to introduce what a switch expression is. So let's take a look at an example. We're going to replace a switch statement with a switch expression. So what we can do here is we can do the following to implement our switch expression. We're going to switch on red here and we're going to switch on red as such. So let's see here. Okay, so we're going to switch on red as such. So if red is color.red, then we want to return red. If red is color.green, then we want to return green. If red is color.blue, then we want to return blue. And instead of calling this variable red, because that's a little deceiving, let's actually call it color. So we're going to switch on color. Heck! Heck! Bless me. So if our color is red, then we return the string red. If our color is green, we return the string green. If our color is blue, we return the string blue. Now what about default? How do we have default in a switch expression? Well, we don't use the keyword default. What we do is we dis use kind of the discard, the underscore key or the underscored character to represent the default case. In the default case, let's once again throw new invalid operation exception, unknown enumeration, and that's the switch expression. We can exactly replicate the switch statement we previously saw with a switch expression, and this is the format we go about doing so. Okay, so I understand that in this example I will also print out the string red, what, what's this tuple pattern you're speaking of? I understand what a switch statement is. I understand what a switch expression is. What the hell is a tuple pattern? Well, a switch expression allows you to easily switch on multiple values at the same time. So let me give you an example of what that looks like. So let's say we wanted color and we also wanted brightness. So let's have an enumeration and let's call it brightness. And let's just have two values here. So let's have not bright, very bright. Okay, and in this get string format function, let's also 
pass in a brightness. So brightness, let's just call it, let's just have very bright. And of course we need to add that parameter here, brightness. So let's just call it brightness. Okay. What the tuple pattern allows us to do is allows us to leverage switch expressions, once again available in C sharp 8, to switch on multiple values at the same time. So what we can do here is we can switch on both the color and the brightness by making them a tuple, by treating them as a tuple. So what I can now do here is I can switch on red and I want to switch on brightness dot very bright. And what I can call this instead is bright red. Okay. I can then do the same thing for green. And I'm going to do the rest for the rest. So I'm going to speed up this video. Okay, so I went ahead and implemented the exhaustive list of combinations between the color enumeration and the brightness enumeration, such that I have the string representation for each one of those combinations. Now, I don't have to have the string, I don't have to implement the combination for every single uh, color brightness combo. I can, for example, not implement a color red and not bright, but that just means that if I get color as red and brightness is not bright, it'll fall through all these expressions here, all these cases, and it will end up with our default case here and it will return an invalid operation exception. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so what I have as a recap is I have my color and my brightness. And my main method, I get string format, I pass in a color enumeration and a brightness enumeration. I then have my switch expression available in C sharp 8 with a combination for every color and brightness combo, excluding red and not bright. And in these existing combinations, I return the string representation of those combinations. And if I end up falling through all these combinations, because let's say I add green here, and I don't have, or not green, I already have green, yellow, and I don't have any yellow actually implemented here, then I will throw an invalid operation exception. All right, guys, hopefully you've been able to learn what switch expressions are from this video, how to use them, and what the tuple pattern is in reference to a switch expression. In my next video, I'll be taking a look at the property pattern, and after that, I will take a look at the positional pattern. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, I have a Discord. The link is in the description box below. I also have a Patreon if you want to tie to the Church of Coding Jesus. But really, guys, the best thing you can do to help me out, and not, not only help me out, help yourself out as well, is to subscribe, share the video, and also smash the thumbs up button, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Cheers.